Hello, Graph Fanatics! Have you been in the situation when you have lots of metrics that change over time and you wish that there was an easy way to see their variations over time? Then, the time series panel visualization is what you're looking for. And in this video, we will do a deep dive so that you know what a time series panel is, how to create it, how to use it, and how to customize it to create the most beautiful and shiny time series. Time series visualizations are the bread and butter of Grafana visualizations. They are the default and primary way to visualize time series data. So why don't get on to create our first time series panel? First, we will add the first time series panel. To do so, we need to access or create the dashboard inside of which we will create the panel. Inside the dashboard, you can always add a new panel with the upper plus add button and by selecting visualization. After pressing the button, you will be asked to select a data source to pull the data into the table panel. For this example, we will use a data source everyone has in their Grafana instance, the test data data source. For more information about it, check the link in the corner. Now let's click on the test data data source to select it and after that you will get to a screen with lots of options below and on the side of this graph space. This is the panel editor screen. By default, Grafana selects the time series visualization style, so we have it already selected. Let's select something below. Why don't we start with something simple? Let's choose the random walk and later we can go over crazier ones. But now that we are talking about multiple data and the query panel, let me quickly show you this. If you want to show more than one time series at once, you can add a second query. Let's select the conditional error. Nice, we have two in one. In the same way, you can add as many queries as you need to have multiple time series in the same graph. Or a single query can give you multiple series too. But right now, to keep things uh, understandable, let's keep it at only two series for now. I will, for now, turn off the random walk so that we see only one, because we're going to start making things look a bit different. Again, we are in the panel editor. Now, in the right section of the panel editor, the panel display options have several elements, but the first thing for the time series, which is the same thing with almost all the panels, is the panel title, the description, the links and repeat options. These are the general panel settings. For now, we will just modify the title. Let's put the time series panel video. Now, Getting inside of the time series options. The first element is a tooltip. This is the little box that appears while you hover over the data points in the graph. By default, the box displays the value of that individual point. But the next option will show you all the values under the vertical section where the mouse is over. And to help you identify which measurement is for which series, each one is prefixed by the query name or the field name. And lastly, you can remove having any tooltips, but I like having them all. Okay, next we have the legend, which is the bottom line of the panel indicating you which series is which. Not so difficult telling the series apart when you have only one series or two series. But if we go to the exponential heat map, <laughs> wow. Now we need help for sure to know which one is which. So for that, first we can remove it, turning off visibility. Since we have so many series, uh, let's keep it. Next, we can change the mode to make it a regular list which looks horizontal, or we can turn it into a vertical table. Mm, not so pretty with a table as we have so many series and uh, it has to scroll underneath, right? But the following options makes it easier. We can have it at the bottom or at the right of the graph. Much better, right? Being on the right, if we change the list or table, does not change much else than the table lines. But I think that the table is pretty, I like those lines. Oh, beware! If we have the placement on the right, we will get the option to modify the width. I want to make it a bit thick for a moment because I'm going to show you the last element. In the values section, we can couple the series names with specific values like the last one, the minimum, and etc. You can add many values, and if you do too many, you will have to scroll. 
Moving on, we have the axis. On it, the first thing that we can modify is the x-axis or the time axis. And for the first setting, you know, time zones can be kind of a headache if your data source may come from all over the world. Here, you can select to convert uh, the uh, x-axis to many time zones and select which one to display. As you can see, you can choose so many. But personally, I like the time from the user's browser or the UTC. Let's keep the browser. Okay, but if, let's say you miss the UTC, we could add one more or two or more, but nah, just the browser. Okay, next we have placement. This affects where the y-axis measurements are placed. By default or auto, they are on the left. You can put it on the right or have nothing in the y-axis. And you may wonder, what is then the difference between auto and left? Well, with auto, everything is left except when you have a series with some other measurement scale. Let's uh, show this. We're gonna change to run walk table where you can have both with one extra one on the right. Okay, but let's keep what we had before now that we I showed you what we had. Since we have only two which are the same, I like the left traditional positive quadrant. Now, next, we have the label for the y-axis. Let's add it as that, y-axis label and it will appear as soon as we type it. The next one is we have the width for that label we just wrote. Grafana by default calculates and assigns a width, but I think it decided it a bit spacious, so let's put a 20. <laughs> Better, right? Now, show grid lines. We have another dot that is uh, on auto by default, and here auto means that it is on but can change if there is too much data density. We don't want the lines on top of lots of points. As well, we can permanently turn it on or permanently turn it off. I like it always on. Okay, now we have the y-axis color affecting the text of the y-axis. Whoa, a mouthful. We can switch between the theme text color or the series color. And I like colors, so series it is. Under it is the show border option which activates or deactivates the display of the border line. And I kinda like to keep that line. <laughs> Moving on, we can play a bit with the scale as the data that we may want to play may be negative, logarithmic, or change from linear to log, making it hard to see it with a simple linear. For that, we can change from linear, the default, to logarithmic or symlog which means symmetrical logarithmic. Okay, for linear data, we can turn on to be zero to be in the center. Again, this is useful in case we have negative values. But if we select logarithmic, we must choose the log base to be two or 10. Look at that 10, it looks pretty, right? <laughs> okay, but in the symmetric logarithmic, where you have both linear and log, you can also set the linear threshold where it will change from linear to logarithmic. But uh, let's keep it linear as we're not playing with crazy numbers. Last, we have a soft min and max. By default, they are empty and they pull the defaults from the max and minimum from the series values. But this can be bad if all your values variate too little from the range that you want to see the data. As an example, your retirement savings account may vary just a bit month by month but uh, you may want to see how far are you from zero or how far are you from a goal instead of uh, just seeing the variations uh, from up to down. In that case, you may want the soft mean at zero and or the max at your retirement goal. But we don't have any lifetime goals here, so we will leave it as it is. Now, collapsing the last section, we will be moving on to another fun section, the graph styles. Here is where we will be able to define the look of our time series graph, as we can modify it from lines, the one that we have seen so far. But we can also check bars with will paint sticks on each metric and points which well, paint points. Now, depending on which of these you select, different configurations and things that we can customize will appear. So let's start with the simplest one, the points. Selecting points, the only thing that you can customize on them are the point size, meaning how many pixels each point will be. To make them very visible, let's scroll them up to the maximum, which is 40, but oh wow, it is too big. Okay, let's do 10, perfectly visible. Now that we saw the only setting for points, 
Let's move on to the next style, the bars style. As you can see, once you select it, the graph will change from points to sticks per measurement. I like this one for when we do have not too many readings or not too many series as well, as it can get chaotic. Look at this, right? But do what suits you the best. If you like that view, go for it. But for now, let's go back to only one series to show you the settings. To show you some of the bar settings, I will jump first here below and activate points. Yeah, this pretty much fuses both styles. Points on top of bars. Cool, right? <laughs> here with auto, Grafana decides if painting or not points. You can decide to turn it off. And we can turn them permanently on. So let's keep them on. Same as with just the points, you can change the size and stack series. Now, we have some pretty bars. All right, moving on to the main style, the one that we started with and the one with most options, the lines style. As you can see, the points were kept active from what I selected on the bars, but you can activate and deactivate them the same way. I want to keep them to show you the next options. Here, the line interpolation is how the line will behave between data points. We can make it linear, meaning a straight line from point to point, creating angles with the next line to the next data point, or we can smooth them and curve them between data points. Last, we can make them step before or step after. It looks a bit like bars, but it means that the line only changes at a data point and stays there until the next one or vice versa for the step after. I kinda like them smooth. Look how pretty. Now, the next option is the line width. I think it's also self-explanatory. Like with the bars, you can push it up to 10, but uh, let's stay at 3. Now, following up, we have an interesting situation. Uh, what if we receive a new value in our series? Well, let me add one to show you. Now, by default, Grafana will disconnect the lines and give you an empty space there. Or here we can tell Grafana to always connect the values or connect and show a gap if there are nulls for larger periods of time than the threshold that we define. I like to know when we get emptiness, so never it is. Now, last is the option to disconnect values. This is not so related to nulls, but only where there is no report on values for a bit of time. Well, let's not connect that then. And well, I think that was it all. Now you are the time series master. The rest of the options are part of the general panel editor options. And for more information on those general options, link in the corner. Now, let's say that you want settings to apply to only one series, or that you want the same graph as series to be lines and another to be bars, and uh, the third one uh, to be points. What we have been modifying affected all the series that we had on screen. So let's use overrides to personalize each. So let's click on overrides at the bottom, or as well, if we switch to the overrides tab, at the bottom is the same. The overrides gives us multiple options to select the series that we will overwrite, but I like the name one. If you want more information on override rules, link in the corner. Using the name selector, I will pick the one that has a few points. Now we add an override property and since what I want to change is the style, we select it from graphs styles. Now let's select bars. Let's also change the line style as I want it to be different. And there you go. Now we have a line style coexisting with a bar style in the same panel. And in that same way, you can modify more settings in this single time series. Or you can even change settings to be unique per each series in your graph by adding an override for each series. <laughs> wow, so many things, right? Well, finally, I think that is all. Now you know all the crazy fun things that you can change and set on your time series graph. Now, go ahead and create your own time series visualization panels in your own dashboards. And stay tuned for the next Grafana video. Happy dashboarding and have a good one!